Alrighty, so video number eight, because eight is great. Uh, what you were looking at on the board is a discussion that I just had about ionic and covalent compound properties. Um, so if you wanted to freeze the video, maybe double check. Um, we did do a lab uh, where there were some compounds and you were able to figure out what did what, essentially. Uh, I'm gonna have this whole video be about naming. Um, so let us begin. But again, if you wanted to, maybe pause that, maybe see if that's cool with you. Um, because those are really your problems. But not for David. <laughs> Naming is a very large part of chemistry. Okay? Um, I will say this. Um, I can speak for me off the top of the hand. Um, regular students were doing really, really well at this, so keep that going. And then I know Magna needs some work still on it because there were some people who didn't take retakes that should have glaring at some of you while some people did it all three times. Don't. Um, he's not in the room by chance. Um, so we can do this. First thing you need to determine, is there a metal? There is a flow chart that you can use. Honors, I'm pretty sure you can use it. Regular, I know you can use it for a fact. Magnet, you may not use it. I already told you that. Here. 2018? No. Um, if there is, or if there is not, I can tell you a lot. These will be the ionic compounds, metal, non-metal. These will be covalent, non-metal plus non-metal. This is the number one way to make things a little bit easier. Some of you that are in the room, I know the mistakes that you've made. You are trying to overcomplicate naming a thousand times. There are only two types of naming, ionic and covalent. Some of you are thinking it's ionic, covalent, covalent, ionic, ionic, ionic. Some of you are fusing multiple rules together. It's literally just ionic and covalent. Covalent, we'll do first. First off, prefixes. Uh, acid. Acids are not on the regular exam. But we will go over those later. Acids will go over. Um, prefixes. Mono. 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 Di. Tri. Tetra. Penta. 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 Deca? People be in here trying to make a living out of it. Wait, it doesn't get past eight usually, right? It doesn't really get past eight, but you might see it. You never know. So, first and foremost, okay? They end with I. Yep. I would. With I. And never start with mono. Okay? You can put mono in the middle, but you can't put it at the beginning. It is redundant. For example, carbon monoxide, something that we've all heard of. There's no it's not monocarbon monoxide, it's carbon monoxide. Let's keep that in mind. And again, these went really, really well. Um, you know what? I'm going to write that down. You don't crisscross. <coughs> so, example. Like CO, 
is carbon monoxide. That's cobalt. It is not cobalt because that's capital. If you have S3N2, what would that be? Triosulfur. 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 Good. Then I try. And honestly, like people were doing really well with this. Like this year, especially I can talk for my regular students, absolutely phenomenal on covalent. The average was an 89 on that quiz. <coughs> phenomenal. Um, but Again, just keep that in mind. I'm not going to do any examples like this to this, simply because you just listen to the prefixes. So, yep. if you can do this way, you're fine. Wait, which way? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to like write out words and then do this because obviously you just follow the numbers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, if you can do it this way to this way, if you can do this to this. Yeah. It's easier though. Are there any questions? Good on covalent? Mm -hmm. Again, covalent common, but as we understand, ionic just as common. We're going to switch it up here. Ionic. Ionic things, first and foremost, no prefixes. Second thing, there are no prefixes. And for real, this time, the third thing is that there are no prefixes. Number one mistake from everybody, okay? From all the regular classes, from magnet, on ionic, this is probably overall the number one mistake. If you put a prefix on an ionic, you instantly get it wrong. Don't do that. Prefixes are for your covalents. These guys go ahead. Okay, so this doesn't matter. So, I'm going to switch to black protein. No prefixes. If you have something like this. All you need to do is you would name it sodium, and that's chloride. Oops. Mess that one up. They don't have to worry about that. Wait, is this for a Everybody. But overall, that's not something you need to worry about. Including you guys. Um, next part, again. You notice that they end with I still. If it's an element, it ends with I. Or you might get something like this. What if I told you that it was lithium oxide? Well, to do this one, you do crisscross. Okay? So I'm going to write that in green. Ionic things. Use the crisscross. So again, you got to make sure that the charges are stable. You got to make sure that lithium is a plus one. Oxygen is what? Plus or minus. Nope, that's carbon. Two plus or minus. Two and plus or minus. Oh, minus. Minus good. Minus two. Great. To do the crisscross, again, it'll be L I two. The two crosses. O one. Again, there is no negative two lithium, always positives. This is saying that you need two positive ones to balance out with a minus two. So I need two plus ones, plus one plus one, one minus two, and that charge is zero. So you're stable, you're ready to go. You've got to be stable. You want to be stable. Right. <coughs> Math? 
Okay, they're ignoring. Great. Then it's crisscross. That's when you do the math. The math proves it. But I got you, sure, you told me. Oh, yeah, it is. So, that's kind of going on. Um, and that's how they all work. These two things are how they all work. But you've got to make sure you're doing the charges. Next part, though. Hey, hey, hey. There's pi atomics. Those are on the back of the periodic table, so you might get something like Li2CO3. What's Li? Lithium. Lithium. And then this is on the back. What is this big old thing? Carbon. You are going to have your periodic tables. You don't have to memorize those things. You will know the charge of everything. And again, I think in video two, I pointed at the camera and said that, so I'll do it again. You will know the charge of everything. If it's not on your periodic table, label it. Do that now. Pause the video. Yes, you with the coffee. Pause it. Check. If it's not, put it there. Back of your periodic table has the rest, okay? So you'll be good to go. Are you, you again with the coffee? Did you check? Okay, good, thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. Are you edit? Nope. Why not? It was raw. It's unfiltered. No. Oh. Have they put a new trick to me? Nah. Mr. Taylor's science trailer. There it is. And again, if you have something the other way around, or you have something maybe like uh, calcium hydroxide. CA is a plus two. Again, that's on the periodic table. Hydroxide is a minus one. Crisscross. CA, parentheses, of course. OH2. So you get um, coins off, you don't put the. Um, For this example, yes, because if you don't put the parentheses, it's going to look like O1H2. It's O2's H2. It's two of these, so you've got to show me that second oxygen. This is how you do it. So yes. the O4 is that? Yeah. Great. And then, well, first, are we good with that? Those are like the basics of IR. That, that's like 80% of me. How are we doing? And the last part, transition metals. Charge is in the Roman numerals. What does that mean? Copper. charge of the transition metals because you don't know the balance electron. If you don't know the balance electron, you don't know if it's plus one, plus two, plus three, you don't. The Roman numerals will tell you what the charge is. So this copper is plus three because that's for three. And fluorine is still a minus one. That's on your periodic table. Crisscross as normal. Cu. One F three, which you can totally write as CUF three. You don't have to put the one, but you may. So those are the same as normal, but again, the Roman numeral goes here. There were a few people I saw from all my classes who just kind of did this. They did crisscross. They just kind of put the three in the middle. That's not correct. So just be careful. Be careful. Show me how to tell. Then the only other thing is if you have it like this, um, 
And actually, to answer your question about do I need the parentheses, if you don't have the parentheses here, what number does that look like? 43. Do you think I'd ever give you anything that big? No. That'll kind of tell you something's up. That's the other reason why. Um, so here, we don't know the charge of nickel, but we know it's nickel. Nickel is a transition metal, it's 28. Put the parentheses, you know it needs it. Just skip and put them. SO4 is sulfate. It is a polyatomic, it's on the back. On the final, at least for me, if you can't find something, you let me know, I can give you a hint. This isn't a final about can you find something or not. And then the last thing you do, to finish this off, the last number tells you the charge. So this one's nickel three solvent. The minus two is what brought this down here. You don't know this, and that's where it came from. Oh, it is by atomic and polyatomic? Or is it by atomic? Polyatomic. No, the power one is two. Are you talking about the diatomic one? The diatomic, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the diatomic is just so sub. Yeah. And that's really what's going on with naming. I'm going to stop the video because I know I'm close on battery and I'm close on film. Um, and again, there might be another video on this possibly tomorrow, okay? But that's kind of the basics really quick.